Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I want to use this opportunity. I want to talk about a topic that has been on my mind for a while now. You know, as a part of the collection journey, if we look at two variables, we have the quality, right? This is something we've been taught in many different areas, right? We have quality and the other hand, we have quantity, okay? Now, quality is generally increasing with the price tag. Right? Typically, a $500 watch is going to be built better than a $200. A $1,000 watch is going to be built better than a $500. A $10,000 watch is typically built better than a $5,000 watch. Yeah, nothing wrong with it, of course. Exceptions to be made because a quality in the, the game of watches and in the eyes of the collector, there's a many other variables to that quality, okay? Historical meanings, the design languages, the importance that watch off the brand, or typically a diverse watch we'll talk about, okay? So we'll have uh, quality and the quantity. But there's a one mistake that I, I wouldn't call it a mistake that I made, but it's a one area that I think is very easy to get trapped. That is, we don't get satisfied with the watches because that feeling leads to continuation of purchases. Something that I'm knowing sort of in line now with, uh, 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 Jeff and Matt Mahon in his videos that he talk about lately, of course, he's been in the game for a long, long time. Now, I over-collected, right? Now I, ha I currently have, on the peak of my collection about a month ago, I had 20, 24 watches, 24, the, 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 the Torber 24 watch box that was a field in full, 24 watches, okay? There ain't nothing wrong with 24 watches, but I thoroughly enjoyed them. And again, I always go back to the principle, if you enjoy something, you should do it because you are collecting for yourself. But I got to a moment that I'm uh, just confused which one to pick based on my mood, based on my day. And I always remember there's a main theme of the collecting, whether you're looking at, you know, someone is really fascinated about vintage, someone is really fascinated about, you know, a, a field watch, uh, a, a watch that's inspired uh, by aviations, you know, diver watches as we know we're looking at today. So instead of just focusing on unlimited numbers in the watch collection, right? I can show you 24 watch uh, boxes right now again, but you know what? I want to change it up a little bit, right? Or someone can show a watch collection of 100 and that would take you hours. So today I want to talk about my core collection when it comes to my divers and my Seikos. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. Of course, this is a uh, beautiful storage done by Luxury Watch Rolls. They're fantastic. We're gonna show them in a minute, of course, that it really consists of six watches in this beautiful watch. That in my eyes, in my eyes, this is purely subjective, right? I'm not trying to convince you this is the right six watches to build upon. I'm not trying to convince you if you're looking at 12 watch collection, you shouldn't, you should just buy those six. This is purely speaking of my own opinion and my own journey of the last three or four years. This is where I've got, and this has been selected over the last sort of about a couple of months. I thought about what six watches am I going to fit in this box? You know what? I would think about the mixture of dress, divers, you know, the Sarp, the Alpinist, the Sarp 33, maybe bring a couple of different Nani's and tunas in it. But you know what? I'm going to focus on the theme of divers. So we call these six watches as a core collection when it comes to divers. You guys ready? we go okay okay i know guys i know guys right i'm sort of hitting myself up to this point because you guys click on this video and you guys saw the uh the thumbnail you you, you know what they are right but i want to build you up to that point right because everything is about a journey it's not about oh i've got a shop this is what i sell buy it. no uh, collectors care about the emotional attachment and the journey throughout the line because Toby, you okay? Sorry guys, I'm just gonna check on my dog. Toby. Ah, oh, he's got my shoes. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, now, sorry, excuse me guys. Okay, now, the six watches that I love, that I think speaks in volume when it comes to my taste, are, there are no in particular orders, right? This is just how I place them. First, I'll just speak to them holistically first. Uh, we have the S. I'm gonna find a way to stabilize the the lead, so I don't have to hold on to it. 
I don't want to. I don't want to curve this. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. The first is the the heavy heater, the most expensive, the harder to find, the last gen of the MM300 SPDX017 that has the Marine Master dials on it. Love it. No more introduction required. MM300. I just go vertically first because essentially I did place that in first. The second one that we have, you know what? Actually, I do want to go. I do want to go this way. If anyone's saying of the last five years on the affordable watch segments between 500 to 1500 globally, worldwide, if there is a brand that cracked the code of premium watches on affordable price segment, and this survey can be done in any continent, in any country, by any community, uh, communi uh, by in any community. I was going to say communist. I don't know why. <laughs> in any community, the 62 mass reinterpretation of SPB line will have to be on the top two list. Actually, you want, I'll, I'll just crown the whole thing. This is it. The SPB line. Of course, this is... So far, you can call that this has been discontinued because this is the first gen without the three o'clock loom, the SVB 147, the chocolate, the brown dial. It looks magnificent. This is on the OEM bracelets, by the way. Okay, the original settings come with a rubber strap, but this is the bracelets that's uh, produced by Seiko. How can you have a cool collection of Seiko divers without some of the best iconic shape? We calling you Captain Willard. Of course, this is not the SLA version of the reissue. This is the humble SPB line of Willard. Now this Willard, I know, right? This is all dark black. Felix, you've got a non-black now. You've got a green one. That's right, if you ask me, among the black and the green, which was, I think that was it, right? Uh, original release, similar time with the 62 mask. I'll pick the green every single day over the black. You ask me why? Look at that aluminum bezel. Aluminum bezel, excuse me guys. Aluminum bezel. Look at that beautiful sunburst dial. Contrasts extremely well. Even elevated further by the Strap Cold Super J Jubilee bracelets. It's a bomb, guys. In a normal darkroom settings, this is what you see. The moments you shine a little bit like, see guys, see the transition. Look at that transition, natural lines, okay? Natural windows. Look at that transition. Man, what a watch. Captain Willis. It's gotta be in it. I'm sorry, but you gotta, you're not going anywhere, Captain Willis. You're in the core collection, that's for sure. So we talk about the three champs. The 300, the 62 miles of widow. I, th I don't think they're a surprise, but I doubt anyone that you check out on the YouTube talk about Seiko's that have the format down as this. Next on the line, we've got a couple of, uh, you can call them discontinued, you can call them vintage, but there's no way they were forgetting our boys from the SKX world. This is the 009, this is the Pepsi, and this is a great watch. I said, that's right. See, guys, the definition of core don't mean, you know, you, you list the whole thing from a, uh, you know, price to perspective from a high to low, even though I sort of place that from a high to me ranges. But I don't matter. I'll tell you what, if I have another, that's why I'm left. I know, guys, I didn't put the, um, the tuners in it, right? See, I left well, a tuner, which costs about three, four times more than this, if not more. But this is a part of the core collection because core, it comes to the design language, comes to the versatility, comes to the popularity and how truly it truly stands throughout the history of time and test of time as well into the future. So 009, the report is part of the core collection. And the next one, I know, I'm making an exception here, Felix. You're not normally the guy that talks about the uh, uh, repetitive. Don't buy the same watch twice. It's kind of silly. <laughs> but if I'm going to make one exception, I'm going to make it for you. 
That is the double zero seven, the black boy. Ah, the whole thing just looks like I can't put into words. Beautiful South Class Auto Strap in a classic manner with the 22 millimeter fat and spring bar with that beautiful black dial. It is a watch made in heaven, guys. If God one day asks Felix or guys, design a watch that you know, we gotta call it the die wash system, resize of all kinds, and it's gonna be except for many. You know what? I think the SKX will be on the top. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is all this is all subjective. I'm not saying this is this is gonna work for you. I'm only saying that it, it worked for me. Uh, the last one, no surprise. I, I doubt it, right? I tell you what, this watch has been, or before it went out, because those three, those six watches, those five watches are no, not not saying no brainer, but they I conclude the the thing about them pretty quickly. The sixth position took me a while. I was gonna fill it. I was gonna fit the position with the Adi, right? The turtle, not the turtle, the the uh, the a tuna shell design shroud, you know, the Adi S and zero two five because it's a reissue. That's what it is, right? Same thing as this with the turtle reissue. I was gonna fill the position with the SPB and tuna. A really fancy watch that one is, but I know, man, I cannot put into words. The last of my core divers collection Seiko edition 2024. Goes to the turtle, the SRP 77J, 777J. Now, this is uh, inspired by the 616, uh, 61, Jesus, guys. Sorry, excuse me, guys. I just, the model name, you know, the vintage turtle, I think 610, 6163, 6109, 6106, 6109. That's it. Okay. This is a reissue, guys. Like I said many, many times. The reason why the SKX is the value went through the roof is because they were discontinued. All products and watches are going to be replaced by a new product someday into the future. When the day goes that they discontinue the SRP JJ777, of course, now you call this SRP, I think 93, right? There's only a few turtles they're making now, don't forget. And they will get discontinued one day because they have to make more money with new products. Those will be a five hundred to a seven hundred dollar watch in a mint condition. I'm, I'm putting myself out there right now. That's how good they are. That's how. That's how. Sorry, guys. That's how inspiring, inspiring those are. Okay, so if you don't have a turtle reissue in your collection, I strongly suggest to grab one of the J version. If you can grab one of the early gen without the three o'clock loom, who is the main in Japan dial. Of course, if you can get SBDY which is JDM version, that'll be even better. Okay, guys, this is on a uh, Uncle Seiko, Uncle Seiko uh, Z199 bracelet, which is, of course, again, inspired by Seiko as well. So that's it, guys. Again, those six watches, if you bring them out individually, you can say to them that those watches, all of them, none of them, requires uh, introduction. They are, you know, there are six of them, each one of them has been done and covered Tens of hundreds, if not thousands, of videos online. And the watch forums they've been talked about for years, right? Uh, each of them are highly uh, liquidable on the second market. You buy them, well, some of those watches don't really come very, you know what I mean, right? But if you want to sell them, it takes minutes to sell if you price them right. If you, you take, those watches take minutes to sell, if not hours, okay? So if you want to have a core collection, and I'm going to put a price there, right? Two, again, reasonable speaking, okay? I'm going to get my calculator. Uh, M300, two grand. Uh, get the braces all up, 650. Same thing for that, for the Willard, 650. Oh, SKXs, you want to get a mean full box, probably $300 each, okay? so. 300, 300, and you want to get J, I'll do 300 as well if you like. There you go, 4200. <laughs> you know what 4200 can buy you in the uh, uh, world of Swiss watches? That's right, it gets you a black bay. It will get you a black bay, I think well, 50A is going to be a bit cheaper. 
But that's, you're not going to have much money left to buy a 50A, right? Black Bay, you can buy a Black Bay 41. You can get a, one of the GMTs. Instead of the whole goodies here. The decision is clear. Seiko wins today. That's it, guys. Hopefully, you enjoy my core collection when it comes to Seiko Divers. And again, just to sum it up, this is my experiences in my heart. If this helped you, fantastic. Very happy that I made this. But if it's not helping you, feel free to leave in the comments why and what watches that will suit your core collection when it comes to Seiko Divers. And that's it for today. I hope you guys are doing really well no matter where you are. And no doubt, I'll see you guys very shortly in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.